doesn't really matter either, yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the Book with Julie. So happy to be here today with Danu Morgan, all the way in Ireland. And I wore my green just for you. <laughs> Very good. very appropriate because it's St. Patrick's Day next week as well. So that's it's a good right. That's right. You must well, probably not this year in COVID, but you must no. do incredible celebrations there. Oh yeah, no, we we have great fun. Every little village will have its own parade, or we go to the parades in the big cities. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. But as you say, not this year, unfortunately. But sure. Yeah, yeah. That's well, you are doing amazing work in the world for lots and lots of people. And you have this great newsletter that comes out. And what I love about the newsletter is it seems that it doesn't necessarily come out on a specific day. It mm -hmm. sort of comes when it comes for you. Is that right? Well, it's supposed to come out on a specific day, but life being what it is, no it doesn't always come on a specific day but that is more accident than design we'll say well I will tell you <laughs> for my life, world I'd be much more organized than I am but for my life it always feels like you read my mind and you wow. sent it on the day that I needed it and on the exact topic that I needed wow well, I'm... so I've always been amazed I mean yeah. truly and this is over years I am talking yeah. about yeah and um so I just I'm I feel like it's a true connection between you and I and the newsletter mm. that you mm. send out but a uh, did the books come or did one of the books come before the newsletter or did the newsletter start first? Um, the I think the newsletter came first, but uh, in fact, it would have done because I set up a website in 2008, if I remember correctly, for the Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers website. And um, I had no intention of writing a book. And then I was doing the newsletter and that was grand. But then um, the UK publishers, Darton, Longman and Todd contacted me and asked me, would I write a book? And I went, oh, and I thought about it. And I went, oh, I suppose I could. Because I originally had thought all I had to say was on the website already, but I had been learning and reading and corresponding with Dorset and Narcissistic Mothers. So I did have more to say in a book. And um, so I did write it and... The rest is history, do you know? And um, my second, so that's my first book. Yes, not, that was your first book. Yes, you're not crazy. Yes. It's your mother. And yep. you see the, the symbol of the, the bird freeing from this head shaped, which I think the designers did an amazing job, didn't they? Because escaping from narcissism is exactly like that. It's the cage is our own mind, the way she programmed us and what we can escape, do you know? So that's that's the message, which is great. And then the second book is actually the first hundred newsletters. So it's, um, you can get them all in one place. There's over, actually there's 270 now, I think something like that, but the first hundred are in this book. So it's both. The book was before and after and because of the newsletter. I see. And there's also a third book. Show us that one. It is. This is called um, To the Unloved Daughter and it's Notes from Your Inner Mother. And the point is, it's the mother, if you had one who loved you, this is what she'd be saying to you. So it's things to, notes to inspire, encourage, uh, even a bit, sometimes a bit of cracking the whip and saying, well, why aren't you doing the things you're supposed to be doing? Uh, but in a loving, supportive, want to see the best of you way, rather than the shaming way that our mothers did. So there are my three books so far on, on, on narcissistic uh, mothers and those of us who are their daughters. And tell us, you know, how did you, if you were raised by a narcissistic mother and you heard many negative messages and many messages of control and emotional confusion, how were you able to write this third book about, you know, letters that a, a daughter who didn't have this kind of upbringing would have? That's a very good question. Um, I suppose I wrote what I had I would have liked to have heard. And in between also between raising being raised, I should say, by my narcissistic mother. And I, when I say my narcissistic mother, just to clarify, she was never diagnosed or anything. It's just my best explanation for what was going on. So we just say that for shorthand, but just to say that that is just my opinion and it could be wrong. Um, but anyway, since been raised by that mother and writing the book, I had had my own child. 
mm -hmm. who I raised and I tried to raise in a very different way. So I suppose I had practice saying the things, if not from practice hearing them. Did you, when you were raising your child, at first, did you find that you were raising your child the way you had been raised and the only mother you knew? Mm. And how did you break that cycle? Um, very good question. I, one of the things I was very clear I wanted to do as a mother was to breastfeed. And Ireland traditionally has very low rates of breastfeeding. It's not in our culture at all. And so even before I had the baby, while I was pregnant, I joined a wonderful organization called La Leche League, which is actually an American organization, which has branches here and indeed all over the world now. And I did, I, I joined because I wanted information and support about breastfeeding and I absolutely got that and it was wonderful. But I also got, which I had not even realized I would get, the most amazing modeling of how to be a mother because the kind of people who became leaders or who stayed around to be, were very involved in caring mothers. And also La Leche League has very strong philosophies about mothering. Now they do say, take what you find useful and leave the rest. It's not, you know, a cult or anything, but for instance, they don't talk about discipline. They talk about loving guidance. And more than just being aspirational, they, they really do teach. They have conferences, they have books, they have all things to teach you good parenting skills. So my husband and I really devoured these and we put them into practice from birth, really. No, we were very, we were very different parents to the parents both he and I had, really. Yeah. So incredible that La Leche yeah. League was there right at the beginning of your journey yeah. and you realized these are the lessons I want to yeah. learn and be able to take with my child. Yeah. What would you say is one of the biggest lessons that you learned during that time that you realized maybe you hadn't had growing up? Oh, God, so many, so many, Julie. The biggest, okay, if I had to only pick one, um, validation. Because as you know- I learned that in La Leche League? I did, and I, well, through them, I'll tell you now in a minute, um, the, because as you know, our narcissistic mothers invalidate us. No, you don't feel that. No, you shouldn't be upset. You know, all the things. Whereas through La Leche League, and as I said, they have a very good library of books. And the best book, I think it should be law that every new parent is given a copy is called How to Listen So Kids Will Talk. Oh, it's the other way around, actually. How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. Yes. Again, written by Americans. And they, that was highly recommended by La Leche League. And I read it and they taught us about validating. And so if a child is upset, you don't necessarily give them the ice cream before dinner. It's not about, you know, letting them r run wild. But you say, look, I, I understand that you really, really wanted the ice cream. And I know you were just thinking how good it would taste. And I can really and you just basically meet them where they are. And the relief and you could see if they get frustra frustrated and upset as they're being validated. It just you can see their whole demeanor change. It's just <sighs> yes, you know, they still don't have the ice cream or whatever, running out to the road or whatever the thing is they want to do that they can't do. But they are at least are understood. And my I remember my son, it's a boy, he um he could say frustrated before he could say frustrated. He used to about three, he'd go, I'm so frustrated <laughs> because um, you know, if he was frustrated, which at three you often are, we'd be saying, I know you're very frustrated that you can't do that, or and so at least it, it just to be understood is the biggest gift. And it's something I try and give myself even into adult life now, you know, if I'm feeling something, just to be my own wise mother and say to myself, oh, you're feeling very sad now about this and or whatever the thing is, and to friends and, and just to just to witness, I suppose, and validate. Yeah. It's hugely powerful for us all. And I think because for those who were brought up by a narcissistic parent, they could lack validation, well, for many reasons, but would you say that they also have a hard time even hearing and feeling their own emotions because they've been told for so long that either they don't matter or mm -hmm. they're wrong? Oh, completely. I mean, one of the narcissist's greatest tricks is a thing called gaslighting, which I'm sure you've heard of where they, they just rewrite history. And I never said that. You're dreaming, you're imagining it. Um, which is completely head wrecking because it means we can't trust our own reality. So that sense of not being able to believe ourselves or to 
trust our own emotions and feelings. It's, it's such a human right and it's stolen from us. And that is one of the things we need to get back, I think, as we go on this journey to healing. And through all of your research and um, writing these books, mm. what, what are a few of the you know, ways that you have found work best for you and others you've spoken to? Well, again, the validation, as I just described out of that book, to sort of tune in and, and as you're feeling something and it, if you can label it, that's really powerful. And of course, as at our stage, we have a bigger vocabulary than a three year old would have. So we can, you know, we can have nuance. OK, you're, you're disappointed and or you being me, but you might you'll talk to yourself. You know, I know I hear you. You're disappointed there and you're a bit annoyed and you know, whatever. And one of the tricks as well is to allow all emotions. All actions aren't permitted, but I don't, I think all emotions are, you know, even fury. It wouldn't be appropriate to hurt somebody but you know you can feel anger at them if it's justified so you just manifest so describe the emotion to yourself and if you can't sometimes it's even hard but just then to describe the bodily sensations because emotions are called feelings because we feel them yes usually the feelings tend to be in our body in a line from our torso to our to our lower stomach usually as a rule so if you tune into your body and you go okay where oh god yeah no it's this it's it's just under my rib cage and it's oh it's it feels solid or it feels burning and you know it will have a description when you tune into it or a block in my throat or you know it manifests in different ways so you just describe that to yourself and as you bring your attention to it it kind of makes peace with it instead of it being this overwhelming amorphous sensation that's happening that you don't even know what it is you're, you're quantifying it and that helps i think to take the power away yeah and away I mean the stress away because emotions I often think as well I, I are our mess our messengers to us they they're our friends just trying to tell us something now they can have they can get the wrong information one of the things a lot a lot of daughters of narcissistic mothers suffer from is guilt where they shouldn't guilt about not seeing their mother or guilt about not seeing their mother as often as the mother wants or whatever so that that emotion of guilt is telling you you're doing something wrong in that incident it's right it has wrong information, you see, because it's not wrong to protect yourself from an abuser. So emotions aren't always right, but they're always worth hearing. Right. For somebody who, you know, wonders if they might have a narcissistic parent, but aren't sure and aren't mm -hmm. totally, you know, sure that they even understand the uh, qualities of a narcissist. And as you said, you know, your mother was never diagnosed, but you saw all of those tendencies. What would you say are some of the first signs that they might see in themselves as an adult to realize that maybe there was dysfunction there? Maybe, yeah. you know, it wasn't a, a solid relationship mm -hmm. that we often think yeah. it is. Yeah, because, and, and you're right, we do often think it is. I was 42, 43 before I realized this was, I knew I wasn't happy in the relationship, but I didn't, before I could really name it, um, because they, the mothers tell us it's our fault. They tell us it's our, so of course we don't identify it. Well, and not to mention it's a very enmeshed relationship, right? It, it can be so mm. much so that you don't even have time to think is this right? Yes. You're just, you're sort yes. of on this wheel spinning, mm -hmm. always yep. uh, trying to keep them calm and answer their phone mm -hmm. calls and be there for yes. them. Yes, exactly. Until yeah. you just kind of spin out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Until whatever crisis happens that lets you identify, hang on, something's wrong. The one clue I would ask a daughter to, or offer a daughter, I suppose, the thing about narcissistic abuse is it never stops. And if you come away from a meeting or even a phone conversation with your mother feeling bruised, emotionally bruised and upset and exhausted and even a little bit traumatized, that's your clue that something is wrong. Now, it might not be narcissism. It could be something else, but it's certainly not healthy. You know, the way with healthy people, you come away from a conversation with them feeling energized and you've just had fun or or even if it was a tough conversation, say it was somebody very genuine that's going through a tough time. Um, and you're tired because you had to support them, but at least you're not bruised and you're not 
Uh, don't feel less than for your you know so it's not that everything has to be fun in chat to be healthy but it has to be respectful to be healthy I think and so that would be the first clue how you feel after having been in touch with her yeah very important point mm -hmm. and when somebody goes to buy your book yeah. what would you say for those contemplating if you could show us your first book again yeah I yeah. love that illustration there Yes, I, I do. And I, I take no credit for it. It was the publisher's designer, but didn't they do a wonderful job? A yeah. wonderful job. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great title. You're not crazy. Mm -hmm. It's your mother. But I would say daughters of narcissists, you know, grow up thinking you cannot ever judge them, accuse them, or, you know, even yeah. say what you your cover says. And, yeah. and so much guilt is associated even with that. So yes. could you just give us a little glimpse into the book and what one would learn, you know, yeah. after buying the book? I will. And thank you for the opportunity. Um, I called it, you're not crazy, it's your mother, because to, in my experience, the number one thing daughters of narcissistic mothers say when they find out is, oh, it's not me. I'm not crazy. Because it's they think huge <laughs> weight lifted, huge and that is one of the, I think, is the biggest abuse that the mothers, these narcissistic mothers do for us, that they teach us that we're crazy because they are, it's like they create their own reality and insist we live in it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy making, of course, but it's not us that's crazy, it's our mother. And then underneath the subtitle is Understanding and Healing for Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers. But I didn't put that title first because I wanted it to, to be for women who didn't yet know. This is, you know, that who are asking the question, this gives the answer. And again, it doesn't pretend to diagnose anybody, but gives checklists. And, 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 and the number of people, Julie, who write to me after reading this and say, oh, my God, it's like you were living in my house. Like, you know, and is, um, and the thing is, as well, these narcissists, they like to think they're so unique and wonderful, but they're actually very, very predictable. And it's like they all have the same um, play, playlist. So when I'm writing about what narcissistic mothers do, it's not surprising. That's what many, if not most, narcissistic mothers do. So it's about anybody who has a bad relationship with her mother. The answer. And and. If, um, if, if, if it doesn't resonate with them, then they can look for something else to see what it might be. Like it could be, I don't know, an alcoholic mother would have different challenges, for example, equally dysfunctional, but it wouldn't be quite the same as this. But it's, it's to answer that question, if you find that you are struggling in your relationship with your mother, and, not, and as well, Julie, that nothing you do makes it right. Again, in healthy relationships, if something isn't working, you can say, can we talk about this? And we'll sort it out. But as any daughter of an narcissistic mother knows if you go to her trying to fix things you just get more abuse yeah. you know you know and yeah. the more vulnerable you go the more yeah. abuse yeah. you get yeah and yeah. then there is exactly. never a come to jesus moment so to speak or an mm -hmm. understanding or a seeing maybe yeah no exactly yeah. because you see our narcissistic mothers don't want to resolve things because they like things the way they are. They arranged them this way to suit them. So of course they're not going to, to want to change. Um, so they are going to make and sure- that is that you so difficult to understand. You know, if, if you aren't that personality, mm. you're, you're thinking, right, is why wouldn't you resolve it? Why wouldn't you yeah. want yes. to be in a positive, inspiring, loving relationship? And that is what I think the mind just can't grapple with. Like you are the mother. Why wouldn't you want to be in true connection? Yeah, I don't get it either. Because the thing is, not only do we, the daughters lose out in this toxic relationship, but the mothers do too. You know, nobody wins. Yes. And at some point in order to be healthy, I have learned from many books and therapy that you have to cut off cold and that creates even more guilt, wouldn't you say? It's a big topic. Um, um, not everybody cuts off cold and I, I certainly never advocate it because I think it's a really personal decision and everybody has to, you know, has individual circumstances and, and family dynamics and all sorts of reasons. I do like daughters of narcissistic mothers to know it's a possibility. I know to, to know that they, they don't have to keep in touch with their mother just because she's related to them. But 
having said that, so it, it doesn't have to happen, but many, many daughters do end up going no contact. And that does, that can bring guilt. Um, again, I think it's, it's invalid guilt. What I always say is it's real, but it's not true. When I say it's real, it's really there. Again, I'm validating you for having it, but um, it's not true as in the information it has is wrong. It thinks you're doing something wrong, but you're not. You're protecting yourself from an abuser. Right. You know, put it bluntly like that. But that is a huge because you might lose extended family as well. And, oh, it's it's a tough one. And that, But again, there's, there's no easy answers with a the narcissist. There's only your choice of bad answers. Right, right. And well, I love your third book though, that, you yeah, know, you write you. letters there and it's yeah. one for each day, right? It's a positive it's note. 200 altogether. So yeah. Yeah. Two, so could you read it. One. And, um, yeah. Um, my daughter know this. A healthy self-discipline is good. A kind, gentle, but firm discipline. Self-bullying is not. So, so they're just little, some of them are a little bit longer, but you know, some of them are even just two lines. Just again, what I wish my mother would have said to me. Um, oh, here's a, actually a good one. Um, considering we were talking about guilt, my daughter know this. Of course, it would not be right to proactively hurt your toxic mother. Having said that, if she is hurt by the actions you take to protect yourself from her abuse, there is nothing to feel guilty about. She has truly brought that upon herself. Mm. if you went over and hit her or shouted at her or whatever that wouldn't be right but if you remove yourself or put boundaries and she gets upset by it not your problem you know if she, this is just consequences and um you know and as an adult we, we all have to bear out the consequences of our own behavior that's right i want to talk for just a minute about how narcissistic relationships can create codependence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm sure you've yeah. Done a lot of research on that and seen that in people. I, I'm not an expert on narcissistic uh, romantic partners in any way. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a lot of the same dynamic. What can happen is that the narcissistic person um, does this. It's called the idealization devaluation process. And first of all, they idealize you and they put you on a pedestal and you are the best thing ever. And they, oh, they couldn't speak highly enough of you. And they, oh, you're, oh. and you feel really good about that, obviously. And you kind of get a bit hooked on it. And then once they have you hooked and maybe drawn into a relationship quicker than you might otherwise, because this takes a lot of energy out of them and they can't be doing this for too long because it's exhausting for them. So once you're in their net, so to speak, they change and they start criticizing you. And you might get out of nowhere, you, you need to lose weight or you're not going out wearing that or whatever the thing might be. It doesn't even matter what it is once they can start chipping away at your self-esteem and a little by little. But they, they start really breaking you. But you are still hooked onto the, you know, the endorphins you had with the, with the nice behavior. Mm -hmm. And that creates you forever trying to get back to it. And that creates that codependency where you're desperately doing whatever you can for their little bit of approval. And, and they will, as they will every so often, give little crumbs of approval because they need to keep you playing the game. Right. But there, there'll be crumbs compared to the torrent of abuse and they'll be very infrequent. Um, and that's, that is the toxic dynamic. Now, it's slightly different for narcissistic mothers because we're born into captivity, so to speak. Yes. We, we don't have to get the idealization process. They can go straight for the devaluation. But if we start to pull away, as you're saying, she may well then turn on the charm and she may well turn on the viciousness. They all have different tactics in a way, um, but the charm and, and do a thing called love bombing you, which is again, part, it's another word for the idealization. I know, but you're my best daughter and I loved you. Of course I love you. And oh, you're so pretty and oh, you're looking well today, you know, um, but to try and draw you in. But again, that will only last it, you know, it's designed to confuse you and head wreck you and make you think you're crazy because, hang on, is this the same mother that was abusing me last week? Um, and to draw you back into their web, it's it's never sincere. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's very hard to raise children among grandparents who may have these tendencies because, as I remember one therapist saying, it's like, the therapist said, would you leave your children with an alcoholic? This is and, and it's 
like the same thing, but worse because you cannot see it. And it's all in the mind and it's emotional and there's nothing tangible to realize. No, no. I do have strong thoughts about this. You see, so much of what society tells us to do isn't right. You know, we have rules for society and they change. Like it it used to be, society used to believe that women couldn't vote, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the thing. And no more women with the camp, they're intelligent enough. Like they really believed this. This was for good reason. And they had their whole narrative around it. So one of the things that are, obviously that's gone now, but we have other stories and other beliefs that still apply. And one of them is you have to stay in touch with your mother. But an even more insidious one nearly is you have to stay in touch with grandparents and your children, Mm -hmm. grandparents. And this is so, can be so dangerous if the grandparents are narcissists, you know, and if they're too toxic for us, they're too toxic for our innocent children. And we owe our children to protect them from abusers. And we have the right to protect them from abusers. And again, there can be a lot of guilt and there can be a lot of people telling us, but you mean they can't see their grandparents? But the grandparents we're talking about are not the rosy cheeked apple pie baking grandparents of our fantasy. They're vicious, manipulative narcissists. Right. Yes. You know? And as you say, we'll, we'll do untold hidden damage. Right. So I would say to anybody watching this, don't be scared to keep your children away from abusive grandparents or your abusive parents, their abusive grandparents. Well, so wonderful to talk with you today, Danu. You are very special doing amazing work for so many people and love these three books that you have. If you want to hold them up one more time and you can get all of these on Amazon, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, or direct from the publisher, um, Dart and Longman and Todd. So there they are. The and they're books. also on your website, right? They only as ebooks. You can't get the print books on my okay. website. Okay. Um, because I'm not set up as a distributor. So either from the pub and actually the publisher of this COVID Times has a and I can send you the details to put with the with the video, Julie, if you like. They have a special offer on the books because you know okay. to buy directly. So I will send you that link. Yeah. Okay, that would be great. And your newsletter. What how would one yeah. sign up for your newsletter? Just just go to my website, daughters of narcissistic mothers.com, and there's a sign-up link on the on the homepage there. And there's lots of other resources as well. So please I invite you to come and visit so and great. you're and you're starting workshops now which yes. are incredible you've got a lot yes. going on there is there is i've started liaising with another irish woman whose name is hazel Catherine larkin and she's a website of that name and she's very very inspirational and between us we've created this workshop and as you know we're running it at the moment and hope to do we've loads of ideas including one on parenting as a daughter of narcissistic mother actually we haven't created that yet but it's definitely in the pipeline because again exactly as you just said how do you parent well when you weren't parented yourself well so we want to try and help with that as much as we can so yes lots of going forward so it put yes. the website is the place to find out all about that wonderful and yes your newsletter is Excellent for anyone who wants to read more and get to know you better. Thank you so much. I look forward to future conversations. Thank you so much, Julian. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thanks now. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Bye-bye.